Good afternoon, everyone. John Casey's new book, Upheaval, Catastrophic Earthquakes Striking the United States. The premise of the book is an anti-correlation between sunspot activity and earthquake cycles. At the bottom of each grand solar minimum, New Madrid fault goes off. The book details all the seismic zones in the United States from the New Madrid, West Coast, Alaska, South Carolina, and all the infrastructure was going to be damaged and how our lives are going to be so greatly affected when these quakes occur. Staying with California, hard freeze warning, Southern California. And a super interesting story here, flash frozen fish. No, not the kind in the supermarket. Literally, this pike was about to eat the bass and it was flash frozen in the water. Mastodon repeat. Switzerland, double the average of freeze days from the 1981 to 2010 average. And while you're watching the video, please remember to press that subscribe button for ADAPT 2030 and share this through your social media. I now have my hands on a copy of John Casey's new book, Upheaval, Why Catastrophic Earthquakes Will Soon Strike the United States. And the premise of the book is this anti-correlation between solar cycles and earthquakes over long periods of time, detailing that at the bottom of a grand solar minimum, massive earthquakes strike the New Madrid fault zone. This is the takeaway from the book. There is so much infrastructure and gas pipelines, bridges that are crossing the Mississippi, all this trade is going to be interrupted, as well as the heating, the factories, the homes, and everything is just going to be so chaotic when one of these quakes hits across the central U.S. And a quick look at the table of contents, New Madrid Fault Zone, West Coast, Alaska, South Carolina, Puerto Rico, and Hawaii. Then the rest of the book, for those of you interested in the solar cycle correlations and what to expect for the future, looking at the past, the latter half of the book is definitely dedicated to solar hibernation. And one little nugget that's included in the book is the most up-to-date side-by-side -side comparison with real-world observations based on satellite data compared to what the IPCC climate models were. Jumping over to Switzerland, they measure days that are really incredibly cold below zero. They call them ice days. And the average from 1981 to 2010 in Geneva was 4.4, but this year it's 13. But overall in the country, from that baseline period, it was only 7.1, but this year, 14, double the average. And if we get into specifics, this year is tied with 1964. And this puts it into the top five days of all-time cold. The graphic along with the story here shows how many of the days that did not go above zero in the country, but in the country in general, there's far more days in January that are well above the standard average. So I tried to match up in the article what we could find. You know, Geneva, 4.4, but now it's pushing at 13. Xion, for example, 3.2, but this year, 7.6. That whole area of Europe is going to mimic what happened in the last little ice age. Got incredibly cold. These are just precursors to Southern California. Hard freeze warning, frost advisories. It's even included the Central Coast, and I love it. The windiest locations are looking at 80 mile per hour gusts. Hurricanes break through at that 72 mile per hour threshold. If this was on the East Coast, this would be national news again. Oh, there's a hurricane coming. Oh, look, so it's global warming. You know, it's the fourth time this year in California. So they're kind of dusting it under the rug, if you will, because they just don't want you to see these changes. There's hurricane force winds again pounding the West Coast. These warnings were lasting until January 26, but they were two days short calling that. This event started on the 25th here, temperature map from Null School, which I linked below in the article. You can jump in and reference yourself. But even into the 28th, those cool temperatures were extending even down into Mexico. And one of the strangest articles I've ever come across here, we've heard of the mastodons flash frozen with buttercups in their mouth. Well, here you go. A pike in the water eating a bass flash frozen. So this is what the ice fishermen stumbled across. That's the lips and the mouth of the pike. And this fish was trying to jump out of the water, apparently to save itself as it was being captured and eaten by this pike. So this is what the fishermen stumbled across. The mouth of the pike sticking out, half engulfing this fish. So, so this guy got a chainsaw and cut it out of the ice. You can see the mouth of the fish so clearly. Different view for you here. Get some optics off the ice. I can't explain it. I just thought I'd bring it to your attention. 
But anyway, thanks for watching the video. Hope you got something out of it. And with the climate starting to show repeating patterns of the Maunder minimum in Europe, you know crops are going to be affected. I encourage you to jump over to Trade Genius, talk to Bob, send him an email. He'll be happy to explain to you how their trading strategies work based on the grand solar minimum losses that they see in the future going out and how that is going to drive the prices of softs and grains.